There it is. All right. Welcome, 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 everybody. A brand new week, brand new show. We're going to have a brand new good time. All right. We always have a good time, but we're going to go get it and, you know, have fun. Here we go. Practicing polyamory. Real life perspectives from the imperfect people of polyamory. The mission of the Practicing Polyamory podcast is to provide a platform for all of the real-life, flawed humans that practice polyamory so that we might all learn from one another and grow as a community. Enjoy the show. I don't know about you guys, but that song always gets me dancing. Welcome, 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 everybody, to this kind of gray and gloomy day, actually. The sun might not be shining, but today we've got a couple of beautiful souls who will brighten anyone's day. But before we jump in and chat with today's awesome guests, I want to quickly remind everybody to please follow the show on all social media platforms, especially on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Uh, but for subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, wherever it is that you download the podcast, you can find us everywhere at Practicing Polyay. Remember that following and sharing is a free and easy way to support the show. And as always, I want to remind you, if you are listening to this podcast, you are a welcome guest to be on the show. We are here to share stories, and I want to get as many voices as possible to speak here because I know that the more stories we hear, the more representation we'll have, the more others will see us in themselves, and the more we can strengthen our community. So go to practicingpolyamory.com and sign up today. All right, everybody, that's my spiel. And now to the best part of the show introducing today's awesome guests. Now, my guests today are two wonderful human beings whom I've had the distinct pleasure to know for the past, eh, let's just round it up to two years. We met at a local Poly Cocktails event and they were immediately warm, inviting, and loving, not to mention attentive and so fun to talk to. Nell is a marriage and family therapist here in San Diego who specializes in working with polyam and other non-monogamous folks and those struggling with or navigating gender identity, coming out, and any myriad of other major life transitions. She approaches therapy from a trauma-informed perspective and offers telehealth services, so you'll know that you can feel safe in her care and you can talk to her from your own home. George is a gold list honoree in landscape architecture and his work has been featured in Lux Interiors and Design Magazine. He's trained in horticulture, so not only can he design a beautiful yard for you, but he'll rejuvenate the environment back to its native form while he's at it. Whether it's major city projects or designing your dream yard, you'll be hard pressed to find someone better in San Diego. Now, George and Nell have spent a lifetime together. They've raised kids. They've got some grandkids. But don't let that fool you. They're still super (laughs) active and have run multiple races and half marathons together. After being married for over 30 years, they've recently added a new life partner into the mix. And today, we'll hear all about their journey. I'm so stoked to have my wonderful friends on the show. So welcome, 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 Nell and George Mercer. Hello. Where's my music? Come on, man. Yeah. All right, all right. Give my producer a hard time. I love him, though. Welcome, so, Nell and George. Can I just, I, I think legally I have to make a quick correction, which is that I'm an associate marriage and family therapist, which means that um, I'm still under supervision. So I can't okay. really... Yeah. And also, we don't have grandkids yet. I thought that you did. I could have sworn that when I saw George on Friday, you you all were talking about grandkids. Yeah, no. I, we don't no. think so. If you, know, if, you, if, you, <laughs> yeah. if you see them, send them over. We'd love to meet them. You know? All right. Well, my mistake. My mistake. I totally, totally. All right. Well, all right. I'm just going to, you know, let's just end the show. Let's just start over. What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nell and George. So thank you so much anyway for making some time to uh, hang out with me today. Really appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and start with a little bit of background. 30 years married. And now you said that you're an associate therapist. So mm-hmm. The therapy thing, that's pretty recent, right? Fairly I, recent. Right. I, I taught psychology at community colleges for a number of years prior to shifting as our kids left home. So mm-hmm. we do have, you know, kids that are, we have kids in their 20s. So mm-hmm. they could have kids. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, as, you know, that was when I decided to become a therapist. Got it. Got it. Got it. So. 
I guess I got to ask, I mean, you were teaching psychology, though, beforehand. So at what point did polyamory enter the mix for you two? And what was the psychology that you were thinking about? What, what, how did your education play into uh, the way that you approach polyamory? Well, I, so we, we, yeah, we've been married uh, 32 years now and monogamous uh, for until about 2013. Uh, so mm -hmm. I guess we've been uh, open for eight years now. And uh, I, th I think in terms of our relationship, perhaps that we've just always been very open, a lot of communication, very honest. I, I and I always, I think Nell is, is more honest than I am, but she's just like, I, mm -hmm. I just was pathologically honest. She can't, she cannot tell a lie. And what to me, say? yeah. So oh, I, yeah. so I think when we, when we began to open up that, uh, that honesty was important to me that I knew that there was nothing going on that I didn't know about and a lot of trust. So I, I th that was important. Yeah. After 20 some odd years together, you've definitely built that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for me, I would answer that to say um, it was around the time that I was going back to the to graduate program. Um, I went to the SDSU program, and it's very postmodern. It is really good at looking at how society tells us what's allowable and how to be. And it was helpful to be in that program while we were opening our marriage. Um, and that was that overlap. So that's why I've really ended up focusing on that in, in as a therapist is that I was already, uh, we were already deep into, you know, trying to figure out what polyamory was and what kind of polyamory would work for us. And so I might as well use that. It was on my brain. So I might as well use that, you know, knowledge to help, mm -hmm. to help other people. And honestly, there, there is a dearth of therapists who are, you know, in poly in, informed and kink informed and all of that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been wonderful. Uh, part of what I've been able to do with this show is to talk to a lot of those uh, kink friendly and, and polyam friendly uh, therapists. But even, even though I'm over here talking to so many of them and it seems like, yeah, everybody should know about it that's not necessarily the case not all therapists and probably the large majority of therapists are not poly informed and are not necessarily poly friendly so for you to be approaching it that way you're still in the minority yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and james when when we did we, we kind of fell backwards into polyamory it wasn't something we saw and we thought that's for us uh you know we were very happily monogamous and then when things happen in our lives that led us into down this path, uh, just kind of naturally, we did have a therapist uh, because mm -hmm. we were concerned that we were doing something really uh, harmful to our relationship. And our first therapist was, 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 was wonderful, but they were very conventional. And we went a few times and uh, at the end of it, he pretty much said, you know what, you guys are a little bit unusual, but you seem to be fine, so carry on. And uh, okay. but you know, we do have a, a, a poly, a familiar, poly a familiar, therapist who really is on board with the program and we don't have and they're, they're not fighting it all the time uh, right they they understand it and uh, are able to be supportive without us having to spend a lot of time educating them uh, about what poly is yeah yeah so I mean you you, you two spent 24 ish I'm just doing the math 24 years basically uh, married monogamously and then when that transition happened when it opened up, was it easy? Was it hard? Who took it? Who, which one of you had the the hardest time with it? Uh, Ooh. <laughs> no, it, it, it was uh, it it was exciting, and Nell and I, I think we're never. I never feel closer to Nell than when we were talking about stuff, and mm -hmm. uh, and it gave us so much to talk about. And uh, I think it's funny. People say, so you open your marriage and you, you feel closer. And I say, yeah, yeah, we have. It's demanded uh, an incredible level of communication and process. Mm -hmm. And for the first few months, years, I mean, we, we still talk about it a lot. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, we have so much to talk about that it actually, uh, yeah, I, I think brings us brings us closer. Uh, yeah, so... So in our dynamic, George is kind of the one who remembers the good stuff. And I tend to be the one who remembers oh, yeah, the true. bad stuff. So <laughs> I would say it was really exciting 
and just everything that George said is totally right on. And we definitely had days where, or, or parts of days where we were like, oh, this is really hard. I, I don't know if I coined this term, but I called them the poly wobbles where, mm -hmm. you know, we go for a walk and one of us would be saying, oh, I'm not actually sure this is a good idea. Like, what am I thinking? Why do I think I'm the exception to the rule? Why, you know, I, sometimes it would be because something tiny went wrong in my life. Like I, you know, forgot to turn in a paper for graduate school. And I would think I would actually find myself thinking it's probably because I'm polyamorous. It's probably wow. if I weren't polyamorous, I wouldn't have forgotten to turn in that paper. And that's why I would say it was helpful to be in that program because that's the kind of stuff that people who are in outside of the majority feel all, you know, very, a lot of people feel that for a lot of reasons. But it was mm -hmm. really my first experience of being in the minority in that way. So it was, yeah. But luckily, those times never really overlapped. You know, when when I was saying that, George would say, well, let's wait till tomorrow and see how you feel tomorrow. And <laughs> you know. yeah, it's, yeah, I love that. And I, and I know when when in those early days, I would similarly be usually when we were apart, because now we had other 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 people coming into our lives. And I. uh I would be driving around during the day and, and just distant from now and kind of beginning to fret and worry about it and thinking this was a bad thing. And all I needed was one quick word with Nell and, you know, just to give her a call and she'd say, you know, I love you. We're not leaving you. We're, 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 we're good. Mm -hmm. And then, then I was fine. And, you know, I don't think I ever lost a minute of sleep mm -hmm. because nice. it, at nighttime we were always together and could reassure each other that this was things were, things were good. So, uh, uh, yeah, there were hard times, but like Nell says, I, I, I pretty much forget all everything bad that ever happened to me. So I just remember the good stuff. <laughs> I love that. I love that. But you, you, you just said that that at night you were always together. Are you saying that you didn't have any overnights with partners in those early days? Actually, that's 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 not true. Yeah, uh, I think in the, well, I think in the it, for the first year or so, I don't think we yeah, didn't have any overnights. Not. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it was it was one of these things where we we started with uh, you know just a a couple of hours apart with with with, with a partner, and then mm -hmm. an afternoon, and then an evening, and then we just we just sort of tested the waters more and more. And I think it was yeah, it was a, actually a couple nice. of years until there was an overnight, and and then there was two nights, and then there was a week apart. And actually, at the end of a week apart, I was that Nell was away for for a week with 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 a partner, and. I was I was I was ready to uh, be back together, but I think mm -hmm. my I wouldn't say it was really jealousy. I just if if Nell was off with somebody, uh, I just wanted I just miss Nell. You know, it wasn't <laughs> Nell being with somebody else. I, I I I think I have a lot of compersion, so I would feel happy for Nell. Mm -hmm. But after a week, I just wanted to see Nell. You know, so yeah. uh, that that's that was what was going on there. Time to yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we and we did. In the early days, we, we we made a very deliberate uh, uh, effort to connect. Like if one of us yeah. was going away for, for an evening or a night, we'd make sure to have a date beforehand mm -hmm. the day before. And then when they, the other returned, we would then have a, a date. And that's become not really a, a necessary now, eight, mm -hmm. eight years in. But at the beginning, it was important to have those sort of check-ins and, and reassurances. And then I think yeah. over time, it's like a muscle. You just, you exercise it and it becomes stronger. And now when Nell is away, Nell just got back from two days away. I I, I just enjoyed my space. I, you know, the, the uh, I enjoyed the time to myself. And I don't, I, I just think happy thoughts of Nell being away with her partner. Nice. Nell, it looked like you wanted to say something. Well, yeah, just ag agreeing. I think we, we do still, like, next weekend, George and I are going to go away. And I think it's not the same, like, regimented thing that we mm -hmm. wrote into our relationship agreement. We'll have this much time together if we're going to be with another partner. Um, but it's just a practice now to, mm -hmm. to bear in mind that we might want to make because, – because there's always that – Thing that can happen where you don't do the fun stuff with your nesting partner you do your taxes and right. you can go away for you know so just making sure that there's some parity that way yeah for sure for sure roads where we're going we don't need roads <laughs> we're taking off whole new world yeah so now things have 
change though. So that was the early years, you know, kind of getting used to it. And I love that, that, that the two of you actually, it sounds like you took things really slowly, just, you know, a couple of hours, a date night, you know, and then slowly, but surely one night, two nights a week, whatever it was. Um, George, I remember there was there was a partner that you would go visit in the UK. So I don't know how many days that that you would be gone for. I mean, just just really cool that you all took that time. But now, now uh, you have a new life partner. You you had a, your your commitment ceremony. What was it in May, April? Yeah, it was uh, April thirtieth. Mm-hmm. April thirtieth. I, I have the evidence. I have to show this because sure this shows it all in some ways. So this is. Um, Val is fine with, well, obviously there's her name. Val is my, <laughs> my uh, I guess I say I have spice now. So she's my life partner. And we also use the word wife sometimes, although it's not a legal wife, obviously. So George made this when we were out in the estuary saying what we wanted to say to each other. I snapped a picture and sent it back to George. And by the time we got back to the house, walked back to the house, he had printed this and made this and put it up as the decoration for the cake. Oh, I love that. The superstar. It really. Yeah. I mean, it. I um, I was a little nervous to talk about this topic today because it is still a fresh development for us. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure we'll have even more perspective in, you know, more time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think um, one reason that this happened, I mean, it's, it's not a legal marriage. So pretty much when we talk to people, they would say, so what does this mean? And we all thought about that a lot. I think part of what it means is it was a very um, it was a solid attempt to get rid of the last vestiges of well I don't know if it's the last vestiges but get rid of couple privilege as much as we could Mm -hmm. because you know you don't we there is in a sense a hierarchy in that George and I are nesting partners all the things we've already talked about Um, and I needed in some way to say this this other human is is that important to me that I'm making that level of commitment to her and it meant just like in the early days that George and I had to do a whole lot of talking about that Mm -hmm. like what would that mean and so I think it's been a catalyst for a lot of conversations yeah yeah that's you know that's exactly what I wanted to talk to to you about you you were saying, well, it's so fresh and it's so new, so I don't know if I can talk a whole lot about it. But to get to that point, there were a lot of conversations. So first of all, uh, when did you even start thinking about this as a possibility? And when you did start thinking about it, how did that conversation go with both of your partners? Well, um, I... I have some kind of, what would we say? Um, I do a lot of parts work in therapy. So I will sometimes talk in terms of parts. I have some parts that are, um, what's the word? Not just assertive, um, leap before they look, you know? Okay, kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a technical word for that that is escaping me at the moment. But anyway, what happened? Impulsive. With- Impulsive. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one got it yes exactly so well done, george yeah you can see why we were a good mm-hmm. fit yeah. so we had had theoretical conversations what i mean by that is george and i had talked about you know at some point would you he's he had asked me at some point would you want to have a some kind of ceremony with Al? yeah i think i would but you know not not at the moment kind of thing we'd had that conversation at least a couple of times and then during the pandemic, you know, I don't know if you've had a show specifically on that, but it sucks, right? It sucks mm-hmm. to be poly in a pandemic framework where you're not, you know, we we weren't sure if we were a pod. It it was complicated because yeah, George sure. and I are nesting partners. And so um, I think it was partly that, that I just felt like I don't ever want anything to get in between me and this person I love so much again. Mm -hmm. And so I proposed to her kind of impulsively, but feel, I mean, really deeply, profoundly knowing this is what I want Mm -hmm. and also not having had an explicit conversation with George 
So just to say this falls in line with what you had in the beginning, which I love, like this is real people doing polyamory and sometimes not doing it great. That wasn't great, honestly. Yeah, I, I think for me, I, I was expecting uh, a, a commitment and, uh, uh, but, but I, I wasn't quite sure of the timeline, but I knew it was going to yeah. happen. And I know, and and you know, I love Val, and and love that everything that she's brought to uh, our lives, Nell's life, and my life, and uh, uh, and I'm super excited. Uh, the, the idea of a commitment just seemed to be the natural progression. But in terms of when Nell proposed to Val, I was a little bit taken aback, just because it's such a big thing. You know, mm -hmm. I had to process why, why that when Nell came back. I was for a couple of for a couple of days. I was sort of like ah. You know, I was just a little bit sort of out of sorts. And what I put it down to in the end wasn't the idea of them being together and having this commitment, but it was the fact that this was such a big thing to be doing that we talk about everything. And the fact that Nell didn't tell me she was going to do it that day, uh, I was <laughs> like, huh? You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally fair. And, yeah. but but it's it's true. Nell is, it's one of the things I love about her is how impulsive she is. So <laughs> it's pretty down to that and to kind of a, you know, an oops. Uh, yeah. So I said, if you, if you, if you decide to get, you know, proposed to anybody else uh, in the future, I, yeah, I'd love if you taught me first. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? We, uh, we're just, we're just figuring this out. Yeah. I, aren't we all? Aren't we all? So how have things changed since April 30th? Well, it's, you know, I, I don't know if it's, so what's interesting is when George and I got married, I didn't, expect that things would feel different, but they really did. I remember feeling different in, we, you know, we, we turned up at the place we were going to spend our honeymoon week or whatever. And I felt so legit. Like I was checking into a hotel and I didn't have any part of me thinking, Oh God, what are they thinking? You know, mm -hmm. like I wasn't even aware that I still carried that shame, I guess, but I did. And mm -hmm. So that's why in some ways this is a really complicated thing is that I don't want to be buying into shame. I don't want to be buying into an idea that um, you have to legitimate your relationship by doing some kind of ceremony. I don't believe that. But I also do believe that we exist in a social world. And I mean, clearly we exist in a social world. And so I think what it's helped with is things like my family is visiting. Um in a few weeks, some of, some of my extended family is visiting. And it's like, well, Val will be part of that visit. She doesn't mm -hmm. live here, but she will be part of that visit. And that's a given now because I'm married to her or I mm -hmm. have a joining with her. And so it, it just helps in that kind of way, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I do find it interesting. Uh, Understandable, but uh, but I push back against it amongst uh, uh, non poly friends who have seen our Nels and Val's announcement on Facebook, uh, and they say, "So why? Fine, but why why are you telling everybody about this?" And I'm like, "Well, people people put weddings and anniversaries and re new relationships on Facebook all the time, but it's always you know it's typically a, a, a monogamous frame, framework." But in our case, uh, this is a, a, a wonderful uh, occasion in uh, our lives. And mm -hmm. so why wouldn't we share it? But I think there's the pushback is because it's non-conventional. Right. Totally, totally. You know what? They can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> we're here and yeah. we're just, you know, this is the whole point is, is for everybody to see it and normalize it, you know, as much as, as much yeah. as we can. Yeah. So, um, so that let, that idea of legitimizing your relationship in this way, um, you know, that, that was kind of the, the way that I heard it, that you were, you were almost carrying some kind of, some kind of shame, uh, some kind of, uh, is this a real thing? But like when you went to your honeymoon, when you went to check in, you know, for your honeymoon or whatever else, did you have that same feeling that same, like, Oh, there's a weight lifted. Like I can, like this is legit now. Yeah, I think I I think in this case it's more about with other people, like in my family especially. Mm -hmm. But um 
Yeah. And, and I think I mentioned earlier, it's like really making a stab at undoing or not having mm-hmm. couple knowledge, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. you know, like really, um, well, yeah. and I'll share something that's, it's kind of ironic. I was on my, on our morning, the morning of our um, joining, we, so we called it joining J O Y N I N G. Oh, nice. <laughs> so on that morning, uh, Val and I woke up and we went out really early, like at dawn. So it was very early. And I woke up with this thought. I said, you know, Val, it's not just that in some way, this is sort of equalizing, like bringing you up to George's status in some way. I mean, these words are not exactly right, but something like that. But it's also bringing you down in the sense that when you have that level of long-term commitment, sometimes you show up in your curlers. Sometimes you can't like, like Val and I are very careful to prioritize our time together because we don't live together. We actually don't, you know, we see a good bit of each other, but it's, it's nothing like 24 mm-hmm. seven. So I think it's in a way saying, you know, we are committed. And so we don't have to worry if there is like this little glitch. I don't know. There's something yeah. about that too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I see it as that, that public statement, right? So why are you telling everybody? It goes back to that. Why are, why, why do you have to announce it? Why do you have to, because when people get married, part of it is announcing it. Like it's here we are in front of everybody and we're showing that we are committed to each other for life. Like that's, that's what this whole thing is. And so that's essentially what you did without the, legal paperwork to back it and yeah. i don't know and yeah it's it's you're in front of everybody so so basically like people you, you, when you go to the family reunions now they're going to be expecting so where's val yeah <laughs> and i think that that's something that that i've uh, appreciated is that uh some family members who were perhaps uncomfortable with with, with the, the whole idea of polyamory and uh have really reached out. I think the parents uh, and uh, mm-hmm. have have really really uh, stepped up and been very accepting and, and want to know more or meet, meet siblings. Uh, yeah, I have a large large family, blended family, so lots of parents, lots of siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's and, opened up more. Um, well, no, not because of Val. It's because of my my family of origin is just huge. No, no, I meant uh, they have opened up more to to yeah. Val since yes. april i would say so uh, yes i think so yeah, yeah. nice yeah and yeah. so something else I, I for myself i i i am enjoying the reassurance that of nell and val's commitment because their relationship is so good for nell uh mm-hmm. and i know good for val too but uh uh i just want what's best for nell and and i want val to be in her life for for the rest of her life. And the fact that they've made this commitment is, uh, you know, reassures me that that will be the case. So it's a real positive. Oh, so I love it. Right? <laughs> oh my God. You can kiss him. You can kiss him. It's okay. <laughs> you, oh, you, you two are so cute. I love it. And, you know, it's, it's really wonderful to be able to chat with the two of you um, to hear the way that you two are approaching this. Um, I, I don't know that everybody will have the same level of support. You know, I, I know that there are others who struggle out there. And then the other thing that, that throws me off about your dynamic is that even though you've done the, the joining, I love that by the way, uh, she still doesn't live with you. They, they, she, she, okay. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I get that right. Uh, so she still doesn't live with you though. So, uh, yeah. So just to clarify, just what you're saying is true. Like we, nothing has changed about our living financial or financial arrangements and that we're not looking, we would love one day to live closer to each other. Like mm-hmm. within a mile would be awesome. A quick bike ride, but uh-huh. there, we don't have plans to move in together. Um, neither of our circumstances would allow that. At, and that wouldn't be our choice at this point either. Yeah. So, yeah, it really was more about the psychological aspects rather than, you know, saying, yeah, we're going to be setting up house together. And I think that is why it is confusing to people, too, because I didn't Mm -hmm. put all that on Facebook, you know, so I I get that it's confusing. Yeah. But I I was contacted by 
an old friend from from the UK who was totally confused and saw the posting and was was just very sad for me and was telling me, George, I'm so sad that you know you're such a lovely man. And I was thinking, <laughs> well, everything's fine. You know, but then I just get, I, I had to explain to them what what was going right. on. That things are great, but it did. Yeah, it was a little confusing to some people. Uh, but I yeah. told them, everything's cool. Everything's great. You no, know, I'm still very happily married and. Val is just, you know, just a, a, a new member of the family, yeah. it's yes. a, a, as well as not an or. Right, right. I, yeah. I love the the way that you're approaching it in this way, because it just it speaks to the freedom that uh, I feel we have in polyamory, uh, the freedom to design our relationships, because y you wouldn't otherwise hear about two people having a commitment ceremony like what you're talking about and not conjoining their lives together mm -hmm. and not moving in together and having all of the, you know, like we think of the the whole relationship escalator thing, but you guys are like, no, 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 we're not doing all that. Yes. I want to yeah. spend my life with you. Yes. I, you know, I want you to be there, you know, part of forever, my part of my family, but you can still be in your space and I'll stay in my space and we're going to keep going this, this way. And maybe one day this will change and maybe it won't, but yeah. this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Cool. cool. Right. It's really encouraging to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, any last things that you would want to leave? Uh, words of wisdom, final thoughts, uh, maybe something that I forgot to ask or you wish that I had asked? No. No, I, just one thought. I, 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 this might sound morbid, but it's not. But I, I love the fact that if I, if I depart this planet before Nell, uh, that she'll have Val to look after her. She can, and I, and I kind of remember, I, I like to think they'll both miss me a bit, but uh, I love that <laughs> Nell's already taken care of. <laughs> so you can see I choose people who are very giving, <laughs> people who are good at taking care. Um, I think I do have one more thing to say. It. I was a little nervous about this because Val said she would be watching this with her mom. So if she is indeed, shout out to Val and Val's mom, who I, whose family I have joined as well. Of course. Okay. Wow. You know, it's so funny that you said that right then. Because, yeah, of course, you joined that family too. And that's ah, so much love. <laughs> <laughs> so oh much lo love, love overload. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. All right. Um, it has been absolutely wonderful uh, getting to see you, Nell, since I missed you on Friday. George, I got to see you Friday. Um, but so wonderful chatting with the two of you. Thank you both so much for hanging out with me. And look, Val's here with mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. One yep. last thing I got I to gotta, I gotta ask this. Is George part of the family now too? Or is it, how does that work? Is that like a... I'm just, just, just what? kind of curious how how that would how would that would navigate. Like, is it only Nell showing up to Val's family functions? Uh, no, we do, we do stuff we do stuff together. Uh, I, about once a month, I think we'll we'll, we'll have dinner together. I mean, uh, during the pandemic, it wasn't as possible, but right. now things are opening up. We'll we'll uh, uh, we'll watch a movie together and. Uh, uh, last week, weekend before last, Val stayed over, but we don't all uh, sh share the bedroom. But, we're, a, uh, we're in a V. Yeah, yeah, okay. but uh, but Val is the most wonderful matter anybody could ever hope for. So uh, I, I love spending time together, but it's just not you know it's just not every every, every day. But you know we, yeah. we make time for each other. And uh, yeah, I think if Val had a big family function, she would probably invite me and George. Maybe I don't know. Um, and her other partner. I'll speak for her. Yeah. George, George is, is absolutely, there it is. There's our answer. Thanks, Val. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, polyamory is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. All right, you two. Well, thank you again so much for hanging out with me, for spending time. Um, this has been a, a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Uh, I feel like I didn't, we didn't talk a lot about the professional side of things, but Nell, I do want to give you an opportunity. Uh, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, obviously you have plenty of experience in polyamory and you're very affirming. How can people get in touch if they need help with their navigating their relationships? Yeah, I think you have it going across the bottom of the screen, affirmingtherapycenter.com and 
I'm on there. Uh, Penelope at affirmingtherapycenter.com is my email. Right. And I would love to hear from anybody. And you're, other and you're, therapists as well. I love connecting with other polyam therapists. Right. And as this goes, well, I guess globally, they would, they would need to know that you practice just in California. Yes, yeah. that's true. There it is. All right. And uh, George, you know what? I want to give you some space too. You do wonderful landscape architecture work. Uh, I actually told my brother about you the other day because um, he's doing some stuff in his backyard. If people are out there and they need help with their backyards and they just want somebody who's polyam friendly because we're going to design three hammocks instead of just two. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can find I Actually, I don't have a web page. I, 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 all, all of my work is through referrals, but you could you could find me uh, on uh, uh, yeah, George Mercer. George right. Mercer, landscape architect. You'll be able to pull me up one way or another, I'm sure. Or, Very uh, cool. Okay. All right, you two. Well, thank you again so much. I really appreciate your time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, James. Really appreciate it. It's been fun. Yeah. And thank you, as always, to our live audience for tuning in today. As a reminder, when we're live, you get no commercial interruptions, but the same can't be said for the podcast downloads. So if you want to avoid the commercial interruptions, be sure to catch us live right here Monday through Wednesday, 2.30 Pacific time, or sign up for Patreon where you'll get access to our commercial-free RSS feed and support the show. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and wherever it is that you download your podcast if you haven't already, and please leave us a review. We'll really, really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Nell and George. Until next time. Have a nice day. Thank you for tuning in to the Practicing Polyamory podcast. Would you or someone in your polycule like to be a guest? Sign up at practicingpolyamory.com and join the conversation. Please support us by subscribing, liking, and following us on social media at Practicing Polya by clicking any of the affiliate links on our website or by subscribing at patreon.com slash practicingpolya.